I have this duty also to do. I hope I will do it well. And if I don't do it well, because the person I'm about to introduce will put all my debt in the account of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have this honor to introduce one of us. I say one of us because he carries the banners of Christ. He has been a model of every value that Christ uphold. And he has done that severally and in years past. And up to now, he's been doing that. Before the Lord elevate him to become who he is today. So it's my honor this morning to invite to the podium no other person than the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, Professor Yeme Oshibajun. You're welcome, sir. Talo dabi, talo dabi olorun wa. Talo dabi, talo dabi olorun wa. Talo dabi, olorun Nigeria to se le ri to mu le ri reshe. Talo dabi. Da bi ta lo da bi o lo ru wa Ta lo da bi ta lo da bi o lo ru wa Ta lo da bi o lo ru nai ti ria to she le ri to le ri re she Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Our host and father in the Lord, the General Superintendent of the Deeper Life Bible Church, Pastor W.F. Kumui, and our mother, Pastor Mrs. Esther Kumui. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, our host, the Governor of Lagos State, Governor Akiwumi Ambode, and Her Excellency, the First Lady of Lagos State, Mrs. Bolanle Ambode. All of our fathers and mothers in the Lord, heads of churches and their representatives present here, the chairman of CAN Lagos State, Apostle Alexander Bangbola. The Vice President of the Billy Graham Ministry, I also uh, welcome you here. <laughs> Senior Pastors of the Deeper Life Church, members of the Lagos State Executive Council, Head of Service Lagos State and Permanent Secretaries present, Your Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me begin by expressing the sincere gratitude of President Muhammad Buhari and the government and people of our country to our Father in the Lord. Pastor W.F. Kumui for attending and participating fully in our National Day celebrations this year. We, <laughs> I 
I'm sure that some of you noticed that we captured him in Abuja for almost a week. I'm sure some were worried whether we'll let him come back to, but uh, as you know, uh, the Lord moves in marvelous ways. We especially thank you, sir, for the unfor unforgettable, the unifying and instructive words that you shared at the last Sunday, last Sunday at the anniversary service, titled Harnessing Our Diversity for National Development. As usual, you spoke the truth boldly, but we have heard the truth spoken boldly often. The difference with your words were first, that you offered godly counsel, and secondly, and more importantly, that your words were words of hope, spoken with grace, seasoned with salt, and such And as such, as scripture says, you gave an answer to everyone. I must say that today's message is part two of that message. <laughs> Becoming a man God uses beyond his generation. Challenging us to offer ourselves to do something for our nation in whatever field or discipline that we find ourselves. God spoke the words in Isaiah 6 verse 8 into eternity when the words as I when he said also I've heard the voice of the Lord saying who shall I send who shall go for us and then I said here I am send me I think those words spoken into eternity many are answering that call and as our father and the Lord said there is a duty for us to answer that call. We must offer ourselves to be sent forth. I must also say, sir, that we thank you very, very much for your labor of love and your prayers over our nation. All of your labors, all your prayers will not be in vain. <laughs> Brethren, permit me to share briefly what the Lord has laid upon my heart as Nigeria turns 58. The short title is, of this address is Coming of Age. Coming of Age. And I'll just read quickly a few verses of scripture. Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. Hebrews 11, 24 to 29. And I'll start 24. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land whereas the Egyptians, attempting to do so, were drowned. There ends the reading of the Word of God. This is a spiritual account of how and why the children of Israel, led by Moses, were able to escape the captivity of Egypt, to cross the Red Sea, and to drown the pursuing enemies of their nation. How did this great deliverance of a nation happen? The Bible says that by faith, Moses, when he became of age, began to reject certain things that were against the will of God. He rejected the passing pleasures of sin. He rejected association with evil. 
He became obedient to God. And so he and the children of Israel were able to cross the Red Sea as though it was dry land. And all of their stop, all of those who pursued them, all of the enemies who pursued the nation of Israel were drowned. The message for our nation on this anniversary of the birth of our nation is that we, like Moses, have come of age. We have come of age. And it is time for us to refuse and to reject certain things that are offensive to God. One, we must refuse corruption, the stealing of public resources, the stealing even of private resources. As the scripture says, these are the passing pleasures of sin. Two, we must obey God by rejecting tribalism, rejecting ethnicity. Just as the young men and women sang a few minutes ago, one nation under God, rejecting all division, rejecting all ethnicity. Galatians 3 verse 28 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. As Moses did, he not only rejected these evils, he stayed away from those who did. And so because of the obedience of Moses, because Moses rejected what God disliked, the people, the children of Israel, were able to, by faith, cross the Red Sea as though it were dry land. A country has also come of age. As we reject what God hates, we too will walk across the Red Sea. All of the Red Sea challenges of our national journey, and it will be as easy as walking on dry land. The responsibility of coming of age in this scripture, the responsibility of coming of age that is contained in the scriptures we have read, belongs to the children of God. It does not belong to anyone else. It is the coming of age of the children of God. God is concerned about the obedience of those who are called by his name. That is why we are described in scripture as the salt and the light of this earth. He's concerned essentially with those who are called by his name. So in 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, God emphasizes the responsibility of his children in the development of their nation. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will forgive, the, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. My people who are called by my name, that is what God is concerned with, my people who are called by my name. And he says if we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek his face, but also turn from our own wicked ways, our own wicked ways. God's instructions are directed to us, Christians, born again Christians. Strangely, and of course, scripture justifies this, God's ways are not our ways. His foolishness is wiser than the wisdom of men. So when he says that all he needs for him to do the miracle of healing our land are the prayers, the repentance of the children of God, and that we, the children of God, must turn from our own evil ways. Then we must know that this is the only way. This is the wisdom of God. So I say to you today, children of God, as our nation comes of age, as we come of age, that the destiny of our nation lies in our hands. The destiny of our nation lies in our hands. It lies in the hands of those of us who are called by his name. Somehow, God has designed the redemption of nations around the sacrifices of his saints. I pray in the words of our Bible passage in Joel 2 verse 25, and uh, that we've already read that Bible passage where it says, the threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. 
And God says that I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. And it says concerning you and I in this nation, we shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and we shall praise the name of the Lord our God who has dealt wondrously with us and according to his words we his people shall never be put to shame Amen. and we shall know that he the almighty God is in the midst of us is the midst of Israel and God says that he is the Lord our God and there is no other and he says my people shall never be put into shame in Jesus name we have prayed we have prayed for our nation and its peoples already in the words of that scripture but I also want to pray for everyone who is here the words of God the word of God says in 1st Corinthians 2 verse 9 it says that as it is written eyes have not yet seen nor ear heard nor has it even entered in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him and I pray concerning everybody who is here that eyes have not yet seen neither have ears heard has, it hasn't even entered in the heart of man the wonderful things that God is going to do for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus the word of God says in Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 it says therefore know that the Lord your God he is God the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments and I pray for you because you love God. Every person here who is a Christian, who is born again, I pray for you that just as he has said, his covenant of mercy, his covenant of love will remain for you and for a thousand generations after you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Finally, I pray in the words of 2 Timothy 4 verse 18 that the Lord will deliver you from every evil work and he will preserve you for his heavenly kingdom amen. to the lord god almighty be glory forever and ever amen, amen. praise the lord I think you can do much more than that. Amen. 